Hello, hello, hello. Today is August 16, 2022. Solutions to problem 151. Parallel plate capacitor. You see one here. And in high school, probably also in many colleges, we discuss the E-field between the two plates. And we more or less argue that the E-fields are constant in between the two plates. And then we even go as far as saying that there are no E-fields outside the parallel plate capacitor. Now that can of course not be. And the question, question 151, was why do there have to be fringe fields at the ends? We call these fringe fields. First, the simple high school explanation. This plate, this parallel plate, the top one, is a equipotential plate. The bottom one is also an equipotential plate. That means the electric potential is everywhere the same here as it is there. But the difference in potential that means the integral of E dot dl in going from one side to another, if you go from this side to another, you will find that this then has a voltage larger than this one, and let's call that voltage capital V. And it doesn't matter whether you do it here, or there, or there, because these are equipotential plates. So the electric potential is everywhere the same on this plate and on that plate. So if you accept the fact that if you go from here to here, that the integral of E dot dl is V, you have to also accept the fact that if you go from here, this way, to here, <laughs> that the integral E dot dl, there must also be V because they are equipotentials, right? That means there must be an electric field here and here and the same of the other side. Very straightforward thinking. There's another way, maybe slightly more sophisticated, but basically the same. You apply Faraday's law to this end or to that end. It is a stationary problem. There are no changes in voltages of any kind. No magnetic fields, no magnetic fields changes, nothing like that. In other words, according to Farrell's law, any closed loop, the integral of E dot dl along any closed loop must be zero. Well, let's start here, and we go down. Then the integral of E dot dl is positive, right? And now we go back to the plate here, that is a closed loop. <laughs> Look at that, now the integral of E dot dl is not positive, but it is negative. And the sum of those has to be zero. That means there must be an E field here. End of story. So Faraday's law is an easy way to see it. The closed loop integral E dot dl must ever be, everywhere be zero. And of course the high school idea that the potential difference between the two plates is independent of your path. If you started here, and you would go like this here, integral E dot dl must be v. If you go here, and you go this way direction, the integral e dot dl must be zero, 
because both plates are equipotentials. Okay, I've said enough. If this is above your level, well, then it is about time <laughs> that you watch my solutions. We'll be friends. That's always a given. That is never in doubt. Never. 